Hey, what's up everybody? We're doing another tier zoo video. This time we're watching the shark tier zoo list video. Okay. What do y'all think? Who do you think is the best shark? Megalodon? I don't know if he's gonna put it in. Does it exist? I don't fucking know. It's scary as hell. Uh, probably the great white, right? That's probably the best shark. I just assume. Because it's great and it's... I'm not gonna make that joke. No racist jokes on this channel. Innovations made by players have been the main driving force behind the biggest meta shifts in the entire history of the game, and today I want to highlight one of the most important, the implementation of the move Aww. Bite. There's actually a fair bit of debate on which guilds can take credit for pioneering this move. But there's no question that one of the first to really perfect it, to the point of being meta-defining, were none other than the Sharks. And since then, they've been holding on to that top spot tighter than Ice Climber players hold on to a wobbling victim. They've been extremely relevant in every expansion since the Silurian, something very few guilds can claim. Jesus fucking Christ, the earliest known Sharks date back to more than 420 million years ago. That's less than the crocs, right? Because those guys are back when the dinosaurs were still going on. So today I'll go over the tier list of the sharks Jeez, that's and highlight the main attributes and abilities which have God made them damn. such fearsome builds. Overall, sharks are at a pretty good spot in the meta, averaging around B tier. The main benefits of playing a shark build include high mobility, high damage, averaging around the main benefits of Blood Sense. Electroreceptors. Motion shows on minimap. Missing swim bladder and gill flaps. Huh. Playing a shark build includes they don't high have mobility, that high damage, and most importantly, the ability to sense any player near you due to special abilities like blood sense and electro reception. OP motherfuckers. Main drawbacks include lacking swim bladder, an ability which allows the user to control their buoyancy at will, and also lacking gill flaps. Gill flaps passively regenerate stamina and is an ability unique to bony fish, so sharks can only regenerate stamina hey, bony fish. Now let's talk about individual shark builds. As always, we'll start from the bottom of the tier list and work our way up. In bottom tier, we have nothing. There are genuinely no shark builds I could justify as being bottom tier. Most sharks don't deviate too far from the base shark concept, which is good because it's a great guide for success. With that said, not all sharks are created equal, and in D tier, we have two builds which don't really capitalize on any of the benefits of the shark class. First is the nurse shark. Low mobility, sedentary playstyle, and a really weak bite. Instead of abusing the powerful kit available for shark classes... What the fuck? That looks like a crack. A shark on crack. Lost all its teeth and all that good shit. The shark class. War First is the nurse shark. Low mobility, sedentary playstyle, and a really weak bite. Instead of abusing the powerful kit available for shark classes, nurse sharks rummage around the ocean floor looking for easy XP. However, they do have the strongest suction force of any fish, and since they don't have many terrible matchups, they're definitely no F tier. Second indeed here we It's a shark prostitute. Hey, that's suction force we though. We have the saw shark. Saw shark <laughs> players, what are you doing? What the fuck These is are that? Some of the best weapons in the game, and the only drawback to using them is that breaking them can ruin your playthrough. But sharks have replaceable teeth, so that weakness is completely OP. nullified. So why did you opt for this goofy, cumbersome, impractical weapon setup? Swinging that thing around uses way too much stamina for what it nets you. Yo, that looks cool as fuck. It fucking could actually... What do you mean, eh? Bro. And isn't very useful for defending yourself. Whatever. You do you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just fucking wait for the moment one of these motherfuckers discovers his fucking chakra key or some of that shit and fucking starts chopping off half the earth. In C tier, we've got all the sharks that decided they'd rather AFK their entire game instead of making use of the best tools available to sharks. This includes the basking shark, whale shark, and any other shark who thought filter feeding was a better idea than being a swimming doom machine. Yes, it may be easy if you make it to the late game. But without good weapons and low mobility, the majority of your playthrough is a huge risk, with mobile fish players like the marlin and sailfish having no problem taking you that out. That thing is fast as fuck. Now we're in B tier and we're almost to the shark builds who know how sharks are meant to be played. Almost. But first, we've got two more unorthodox builds. Some of my personal favorites, actually. The first is a shark who decided that, despite being one of the smallest of its kind, it would attack the largest builds in the game. The cookie cutter shark. Cookie cutter sharks are unorthodox, 
in that instead of going for the predator playstyle, they function as a parasite. They simply latch onto a whale or oh, other massive player. Oh, these things! And by twisting themselves back and forth, I did not know these things were called cookie cutter. I did not even know they were sharks. Those were just some goofy shits. They steal a cookie-shaped bite right off. That's fucked. This doesn't do much damage to players, but interestingly, this build was a secret among the shark guild up until a few cookie cutter players accidentally attacked human submarines and actually caused their sonar to malfunction. This was during the Cold War, so the Russians and Americans assumed that the other was somehow sabotaging their submarines, until eventually a Soviet sub surfaced with a shark player still latched on. How the fuck do they latch on to fucking submarines though? What kind of fucking teeth does this thing have? In B plus two, we have a shark which uses one of the only AoE stun moves seen in the entire game, the Thresher Shark. Attacking a school of fish is difficult, and due to their advanced evasion and diversion <laughs> tactics, you have to be fast, lucky, or clever in order to even catch a single fish. That is, unless you can hit them with a flashbang, which is essentially what Thresher Sharks do. Thresher Sharks have tails as long as the rest of their body, and they use them as a whip, creating oh, shockwaves no, no. which stun small groups of fish, negating their normally excellent evasion abilities. They do all of this without deviating too far from the great base stats of the shark build. Yo, there's so many fucking unique sharks. What? This seems so Thresher cool. Thresher Sharks do. Thresher Sharks have tails as long as the rest of their body. Bow. And they use them as a whip, creating oh, shockwaves no. which stun small groups of fish, negating their normally Bro. excellent evasion abilities. They do all of this without deviating too far from the great base stats of the shark build, so they retain decent mobility and attack power while wielding this weapon. Oh, In A tier, we finally get to those famous core shark builds everyone knows, loves, and fears. It's hard to rank these in relation to each other because they're all just so darn great. We'll start with the Tiger Sharks. Tiger Sharks have higher stealth than most of the well-known shark builds, and also have uniquely shaped teeth that make them more effective at cutting through armor and bone. Similar to actual tigers, the main strategy of a Tiger Shark is to get close to its target with stealth, and then use a quick burst of speed to snatch it before it can react. On the opposite end of the spectrum from this strategy, we have the Mako Shark, which has the highest mobility of all the sharks, and uses this to chase down its targets. This playstyle requires a lot of stamina. So it kind of looks like a. Um, it's the highest mobility of all the sharks. A dolphin uses this look to at chase it. down its targets. Look at its face. This playstyle requires a lot of stamina, so this build breaks the mold and opts for warm blood instead of being cold blooded like Ooh. most other fish. This gives the Mako Shark the benefits of fast stamina regeneration, allowing it to keep up a pursuit longer than most other hunters. Since this speed comes at a cost to size, it doesn't quite have the monstrous weight advantage over its targets. And so Mako players need to be careful and not get too greedy. The ocean's other premier speed demons, the Swordfish and Marlin, can be tough matchups for them. At the top of A tier we have the Bull Shark, which has two unique and powerful abilities. The first is that they have the highest bite force of any shark, meaning that even though they have- Whoa! Wait, hyenas have strong bite forces? I did not know that. Damn, look. My boy, the jaguar has a stronger bite force than a fucking polar bear? What? Bro! Highest Yo. bite force of any shark. Meaning that even though they have pretty average teeth in terms of slicing and cutting... Video mods. Tiger shark, bull shark, smash mod. A falchion mod. What is this a reference to? Falchion mod. Utility. They can still deliver an extremely potent bite. The second ah. ability is that bull sharks can enter freshwater servers without receiving the energy sapping and damaging debuff that obligate oh, saltwater builds do. This allows them to travel into rivers and streams oh, yeah, that's where up. they have no real competition. Well, not in real this life, makes but... bull sharks the best build for griefing low level players. And judging by the bull shark's reputation for being the most aggressive shark, it's clear that this is exactly the type of player that this build attracts. And here we are, the head honchos of the shark guild. There's two builds here that occupy low S tier, and honestly I can't place one above the other, they're both just awesome. What makes them so excellent is how well they use their tracking abilities, blood sense, and electro reception. The Great White Shark is no doubt the most feared ocean build in the current meta, and the closest thing to the god tier Megalodon still in existence. They pretty much just take everything that what? current meta, and the closest thing to the god tier Megalodon still in existence. Still in exist- oh, he means- oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought he meant that the mega the megalodon is still in existence, but he means that that's the closest thing still in existence. Okay, I'm they just pretty much just stupid. take everything that my makes bad. sharks so strong and push all of those things to their limit. 
They don't have as high bite damage as the tiger or bull shark, but the force of a great white's charge attack slamming into their target more than makes up for it, and usually takes the stock no problem. Hunting seal players is difficult because they're clever and try to avoid putting themselves at risk when they don't need to. This is why the great white's ability to see above water is so crucial, because they can see which islands and reefs their targets are hiding on and camp them out. Their blood sensibility is through the roof and their electroreception ability is quite polished as well, but nowhere near to the extent of the last build on my list, the hammerhead. Now, if you aren't a Hammerhead player, I'm willing to bet that when you look at this build, you think the player fell asleep during character creation and accidentally set eye width to the max. Yes. But if you think this option is purely aesthetic and not intentional, you couldn't be more wrong. Hammerheads have the best, most well-optimized sensory abilities in the game. They have full panoramic vision and have binocular eyesight ahead and behind them, which gives them a massive accuracy bonus on the attack and a huge evasion bonus if they're being chased. With the chemo and electroreceptors on the front of their face, they essentially have 3D smell and 3D electroreception, putting their spatial awareness almost as high as dolphins and bats. Wait, what the fuck? Look at this shit. That's insane. Can you imagine one of your eyes looks at your ass, the other one looks at your dick? That's fucking next level, bro. 3D electroreception, putting their spatial awareness almost as high as dolphins and bats. Their snout shape also lets them turn on a dime, which makes it so their attacks almost never miss. Furthermore, while they don't hunt together, they do travel in schools, providing safety in numbers and causing an intimidation debuff on pretty much the entire surrounding area. So that's the tier list for the sharks. As yeah. you can see, they're an amazing class with a lot of useful abilities and strengths to play around with. They have only a few bad mashups like dolphins, orcas, and a few other top tier fish like swordfish and marlin. Thanks for watching. You may have noticed that this channel went from less than 10,000. Damn. There was so much about sharks that I did not know. God damn. See a fucking flashbang shark? Pew! Pew! Bitch. Fucking flash the shit out, you boy. God damn. So many fucking cool sharks. Another fucking amazing video by Tier Zoo. As usual, like, subscribe, comment down below if you have any suggestions or comments. And I'll see you next time, everybody. See ya. Have a good day.